Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the presentation of Deutz Q1 results. My name is Christian Ludwig. I am Senior Vice President of Communications and Investor Relations. Before we start, please have a quick look at our disclaimer. If we look at the key operational and strategic developments in Q1, we have to say that we had a strong start into the year. New orders grew by more than 10% to more than 500 million. Unit sales actually increased 35% to almost 44,000 units, and revenues grew by 30% to 447.9 million. But even better was our development of our adjusted EBIT. After barely breaking even in Q1 last year, we were able to achieve a nice jump in operating earnings by 3.3 percentage points, which delivered us an adjusted EBIT of 15.8 million. But also important for us was that we kicked off our multi-phase strategy process where we defined our first targets. I'll come to that in a minute. Also, we were able to finalize two smaller service acquisitions in Ireland and the Netherlands. And on the funding side, we restructured and strengthened the group's funding. But of course, we're also dealing with current issues in the supply chain. The supply chain has been adapted to the geopolitical situation. Let's have a closer look at our multi-phase strategy process. As I said, first targets have been defined. We are looking at a three-stage approach with, in the short term, the period between 2022 and 2025. This is where we're focusing on. This is where we have to find our first performance targets. First of all, we want to increase the profitability of our classic business significantly by 2023. And secondly, we have decided that we want to expand our profitable service business further. Our new service target is 500 million by 2025. This will occur by organic and inorganic growth. And on the inorganic side, we were able to finalize two smaller acquisitions, one in the Netherlands and one in Ireland at the start of May. We will give you a further update on our strategy progress in the second half of 2022. One important pillar of a strategy process is to ensure that the price increases are passed on to the customers. Energy prices, raw material prices, logistic costs, also product costs have increased significantly in the past months. We believe that we'll need to increase prices by eight to 12% to be able to keep our margins stable. And we are monitoring the ongoing cost trends very closely. We have a process established for the structuring of pricing. First round of price increase in our new engine business was implemented already with the effect of January 1, 2022. The second round of prices is initiated as well and will be implemented by the end of Q2. And we will closely monitor this going forward as we need to pass on these higher raw material costs to ensure that our profitability is safeguarded. Finally, on the strategic side, very important for us is the restructuring of funding. Before we renegotiated our funding, we had a 160 million syndicated loan with a duration until the end of June 2024, also took three bilateral credit lines of 25 million each. We have canceled the three bilateral lines and increase the volume of our long-term loan from 160 to 250 million. And the terms have been extended by three years to 2027 with an extension option. We have also included for the first time an ESG component with a bonus and a malice system that will help us to improve our funding. Overall, we now have sufficient financial headroom, including growth by acquisitions. Let's have a quick look at the numbers in a little bit more detail. If you look at the new orders, as I said before, we saw a growth of almost 10% to more than 500 million. This was mainly driven by the material handling and the agricultural segment. On the unit sales side, we grew by close to 30% overall, with the classic business of the Deutsch diesel engines growing by 35%. And this is also reflected in our revenue growth of roughly 30%. Here, we have to take into account that the service part of the business only grew by 15%, which is still a very solid number. Therefore, overall, the growth is only 30%. With these set of results, our orders on hand actually climbed to almost 750 million, which is a record level for Deutz. If you back out the service orders in that number, we come up with roughly 93,000 engines we have in the order backlog, which is a massive amount for Deutz. But even more important for us is that our earnings improvement continued. As you can see already last year, we were back to black figures in the EBIT margin, but we saw a negative trend. Our EBIT margin was coming down quarter over quarter. With Q1, we were able to reverse the trend. This is due to 
increase of volume business and the effect of cost savings, but also we were able to pass on the rising costs of raw materials to our customer in a much broader fashion. The EBIT margin for external items increased to 3.5 percentage points. Our net income grew to around 12.5 million and the earnings per share for exceptional items came in at 10 euro cents. We have to also say that we had some one-off effects due to management changes. So the reported EBIT came only in at 9 million. A closer look at some of our key balance sheet figures on R&D spending, we were able to show a slight increase in R&D as we continue to invest in our future. But due to the high growth in sales, the R&D ratio came down 60 basis points to 5.3%. On the capital expenditure side, we have started to invest a little bit more than last year. We have um, investments in new test tricks, especially for our hydrogen engine. And also we are starting to invest in the new line six here for the engines above four liter in Cologne. Therefore, capital expenditure grew by 57% to 40.5 million. On the working capital side, the investment in the growing sales and also increasing inventory due to the issues of supply chain led to an increase of 8.8%. This roughly 20 million growth uh, since the beginning of the year also led to a slightly higher working capital ratio of 16%. We believe that we're able to bring that down again towards the end of year. This is the usual seasonality, but it did have some effects on our cash flow, as you can see in the next picture. Cash flow from operating activities declined by 7.4 million despite the strong growth in EBIT. And this is basically only due to the increase in working capital. And this trend is also visible in our free cash flow which was down slightly year over year, but again, only due to the increase in working capital. And no surprise, also our net debt figure slightly increased again with the negative free cash flow that had to be expected. Now, a quick look at our new segmental breakdown. In the classic segment, which comprises the Deutz diesel engines, new orders were up more than 10%, unit sales were up, as mentioned before, by 35%, and the revenue was up by 30%. Deviation between unit sales growth and revenue growth, again, is due to the service part of the business, which only grew by 15%. Most positive for us was the growth in adjusted EBIT from 4.6 million to 25.4 million, a margin of 5.8%, which shows that we are getting a better grip on the profitability of our classic business. And a quick view on our green segment here, New orders, unfortunately, were down by 20%, but that was due to a seasonal effect last year. But due to the corona business, we had a lot of new sales and new orders for the torpedo business. Unit sales actually were up by 5%. Revenue was even up by 40%. And we had some larger project business, but no surprise, adjusted EBIT was significantly down year over year as we continue to invest heavily in new products like a hydrogen engine, like our electric drivetrains for e -Doids. Finally, a quick word on the guidance. As you all know, we have continuing challenges in our supply chain. The allocation arrangements, particularly for electronics, plastic, and steel in the global markets remain very difficult. On top of that, in our market China, we're faced with power outages and widespread coronavirus-related lockdowns, which does not help the demand growth there either. We see substantial price raises beyond the standard inflation charges for metals. We have a disruption in the national transportation sector. And on top of that, the war between Russia and Ukraine adds to all that woes. So we see additional problems in what was already a difficult procurement environment. Therefore, our guidance for 2022 is still under review. Initially, we would have said we were going to sell between 165,000 and 180,000 Deutsche engines. That would have related to a revenue between 1.7 to 1.85 billion and an EBIT margin before exceptional items between 3.5 5 to 5 percentage points. With Q1, with 3.5%, we're actually at the low end of that corridor, which is good for a seasonal weaker quarter. Also, we are right where we wanted to be in our classic business. There we were targeting 4.5 to 6.5% EBIT margin, and we were able to achieve 5.8% in Q1. But due to the challenging environment, we are not able to confirm this guidance. We see too many issues in the supply chain increase in price for transportation, energy, and raw materials. They were not able to have the visibility to really confirm the guidance right now. We will keep you posted and hope to have an update for you available by Q2. With that, I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, C11A, for having us. And if you have any additional questions,
please contact the Deutz IR department. Goodbye. Since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. That's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and value-added content possible for you. If you're a stock-listed company or corporation and want to find out how we at c Celebrity can make a company video with and about you, please email us at community at c